Okay, but inequality is inevitable, is it not? And well, that's another we, thing we, I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. And because I had this client who was a mathematical genius, a clinical client, he taught me a lot of things I didn't know. I hadn't learned as a statistician. And one of the things he talked to me about was the Pareto principle. And so I went and looked into that in some depth. And so I found, for example, that it's so such a strange phenomenon. It's like the square root of the number of people operating in a specific discipline produce half the output that's the law and so there's a thousand scientists working on a particular in a sub -dis, in a discipline 30 of them publish half the papers and you can look across it's the same with basketball uh hoops successfully managed hockey goals scored soccer goals scored records produced books written books sold Records sold, it's like everywhere, this, this law, this weird square root law. Sometimes people sum that up as the 80-20 principle, but yeah, it's way worse. Yeah, that's the way than, I heard it. Yeah, it's it. way worse than that. Yeah, it's square way root is worse, worse than 80-20. Than <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it implies, for example, if you have an organization with 10,000 people, 100 of them doing half the work. Yeah. Now, if you have 10, it's three, and that's not so bad, but at 10,000, it's 100. And you think, no way. It's like, well, if you meet some of those people who might be in that 100, you you might think differently so and this looks like this some fundamental rule and so you're interested in income distribution and so what do you make of this sort of thing well it reminds me of a classic paper by the late economist sherwin rosen university of chicago called the economics of superstars and he starts it out by observing 80 20 like observations by you know Let's look at the earnings of tennis players and look at the rank. So how much total prize money is won by tennis players and what proportion of it goes to people based on the rank? And he gets something like an 80, you know, the, the top, you know, 20 or 25 tennis players are taken in, you know, the vast majority of the winnings. And, it, you know, record sales by um, uh, musicians in various genres of uh, musical production and whatnot. Similarly, the top ones are getting most. Of so he says, how can we account for this? And uh, th this, I think, should be a part of anybody's effort to explain uh, the uh, Pareto principle as you've uh, defined it or the 80-20 rule. He says, look, to produce um, uh, something that people want to see, you need talent, but you also need other resources. And so it's the combination of the productivity of the talent, which is scarce and distributed in the population, and the effectiveness of their ability to command other resources, which taken together, determine what they will be able to produce. Um, right, so you need a combination. So imagine one distribution would be talent. And so you need to be in, say, the top 10%. But that's not enough. You also need I don't know, you need to be in the top 10% of education, say, to be a successful research scientist. And the juxtaposition of those two curves produces a real fractional percentage. And those people are hyper qualified for that particular enterprise. And it's so something like the, that. Yeah, now, he, yeah. he, he adds another element, which is let's take opera singers. He uses this example. So in the old days, before you had high quality sound reproduction, such that you could sit in your living room and listen to a recording of an opera singer through your speakers that produced an effect that was almost as good as being in the opera house. Before that, before that, you had to actually go to the opera house to hear opera. Now, the opera house can only accommodate a couple of thousand people max. So the very, very, very best opera singers could still only command an audience of a couple of thousand, hundred thousand people in any given performance which leaves plenty of room for the second, third, fifth, and 30th best to be able to travel to the small towns and still make a living. But once it becomes possible for the best to record their uh, performance and to distribute it in that way, the person sitting in the small town has a choice. Do I go to hear a 20th rate opera singer in the local uh, hall, or do I put a, a recording of the best one on my device? Now, uh, often they will choose the go with the recording rather than to go to the 20th best. And that means that the top opera singers are not going to command an even greater share of the market. And the insight there is that technological change, which permits the most talented to lever their talent to a larger audience, is the key to understanding why they get so much of the, of the take. 
compare right uh, right well you could so it's like the smaller the game the less the gain at the top but we expand the games continually with technology and, and recording is an excellent example of that and so i guess what we hope is that we produce enough new games so that everybody can win at something but we're still we're still funneling a tremendous number of resources to people at the top of whatever the game is especially as these games become big so Yes. And you see that, you see that particular, well, it's really obvious with money and people complain continually about the top 1%, but the problem is, is that no there's a book called Big Science, Little Science that was written in about 1962 and the author escapes me at the moment, but he ex did exactly the same sort of analysis for the scientific literature. It's exactly the same story. So hyperdominance of a tiny minority of people. And so there's a natural, it, it's something like positive feedback loops too, isn't it? Because, and I've noticed this as I've become more famous, I suppose, is that you get known and some more people know you and some more people are likely to attend to you and then more people are willing to talk to you because you have an audience and so that drives the expansion of the audience and your connection network grows at the same time and you have more resources and so it just, it's a, pos it's a bunch of positive feedback loops moving upward. I yeah. think the word network is very important there, and I, I think what with social media and whatnot, and and uh, the um, magnifying the ability of individuals to uh, have influence and uh, to have influence on people who have influence, the the density of that network is a is a tremendous asset.